since our prayer and fasting was not in vain. And we know, Lord God, that, Father, you have heard and you have answered our prayer. Because your word tells us that anyone who comes before you must know that you are the God who answers prayer. And so thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for they that are making their way here, mighty God. Grant them safe passage, mighty Father. And those that are watching, Lord Jesus, I pray that may you minister and touch them right there where they are. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor that we will celebrate you in this place. We will exalt you in this place. Lord Jesus, we say this morning, Lord God, fill our hearts with joy. We lay all our burdens before you that we may praise you and it may be acceptable before your throne. That as we raise this incense of worship and praise, Lord God, may it be acceptable before you. Lord God, we give you glory and we give you honor, Lord God, for every good gift that you have given us. Now, Lord Jesus, we say let the Holy Spirit minister in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. As every saint said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I would just like to just ask everyone to just don't greet your neighbor, but just turn to your neighbor and just say, it is time to rain. Tell them it is time to rain. It is time to rain. And as you've seen, I would like us to just observe the first song in the bulletin. This song was written by our praise team. This song was in season with what we've been told. And we, as a church, have seen ourselves go through the impossible, face the impossible. We have seen in our families, we've faced the impossible. And so this song was written to strengthen the person who has gone through the impossible, that it is time to reign over the impossibilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to just... I know you'll be like, ah, Mr. Zimba, why? But I'm just going to ask us. We're going to learn this song. Amen, Pastor Jesse. We're going to learn this song. So I'm going to need, I'm going to need the drums, the beats, give me the timing. And I'm going to need the key too. Then you're ready, right? Okay. So it goes this way. The audience is going to help me by saying It is time to rain Can we catch that first? Let's do it together, let's go It is time to rain Ah, you're such an awesome class Let's do this again Let's go It is time to rain Praise team, can we join too? Let's go One more time, let's go It is time to rain Wow, okay now I'm going to answer you like a question, raining over, and then you're going to say impossibilities. Can you turn to someone and say impossibilities? Impossibilities. Impossibilities. Say it with vigor. Impossibilities. Okay, so let's try this one more time. One, two, three, go. It is time to rain. Raining over. Impossibilities. It is time to rain, raining over impossibilities. Can we do that one? Church, can we do that? Okay, now we're going to start the whole song. Give me the song now.
hold it, 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 hold it. My class is not working well. Hallelujah. Can the audience help me? Can the audience help me? It is time to rain. Just that, just that. Let's go. Praise him, let's go. It is time to rain. Let's just keep it there. One more time, let's say it. It is time to rain. Now we're going to have the praise team answer with impossibilities. Let's go. It is time to rain. Raining over impossibilities. It is time to rain. Raining over impossibilities. Let's go. It is time to rain. Raining over impossibilities. Come on. It is time to rain.
Powerful name 
can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name What a powerful name it is What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is And nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus There is no name more powerful There is no name more beautiful There is no name most gracious there is no name where we find healing. There is no name where we find power. There is no name where we find healing. Then the name Jesus, then the name Jesus. Who can? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the King? No one can. No.
trust in you. We do, yeah. Yes, we put our hope in you. You will, yeah. You will deliver. You're a provider. I find my victory. This morning we declare, church, open our hearts and declare that victory belongs to our Jesus. We have been praying and fasting. This is the seventh day of prayer and fasting and the first Sunday of October 2021. Hallelujah. If the victory was not to belong to Jesus, even we would have not been here. Take a minute to thank God. Open our hearts. Don't look at your neighbor. Look at the throne of Jesus. Tell the Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your care. Oh, victory belongs to you, Jesus. Past nine months of 2021, in spite of pandemic and calamities and chaos, what shook the world around, the Lord sustained us. He given us the privilege to come to the Sunday morning and to worship Him and glorify Him. There is no name above the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, this morning as we are here, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. As a church, as a family, we have been praying and fasting tonight. Lord, we know the heaven has answered our prayers. The season to reign over every impossibility through Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what kind of impossibility that means. It may be spiritual, legal, relational, financial, social, generational. Maybe challenging our destiny and future and career. Tonight we have a good news and hope. The Lord is reigning in the name of Jesus and we shall reign in Christ thank you Lord 
Father, we commit the needs of the people this morning. You will meet them according to your riches in glory. We pray for our nation, Zambia. We pray for our president, our ministers, and every citizen of this nation. This is the nation that is called by the name of Jesus. Father, you will bless the nation, O oh God of Zambia. Oh, we, will, we shall prosper, we shall be blessed. Father, we pray for the various nationalities that are represented in house of prayer. We pray God's grace upon that nation. This morning, even we remember where the nations, there is no freedom to worship even truth and spirit. We pray, oh God, hallelujah. Father, we pray, oh Jesus, oh Lord, there is a freedom. You will touch the heart of the king. The word says the heart of king is like a water course. You direct the way you want. We pray there is a freedom, protection, and you preserve the church. We pray for the nation of Israel and peace and unity, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom of the government for us to have a, a service regularly. We pray the devil will not manipulate. The pandemic will not, the fourth wave, O God. We paralyze it in the name of Jesus. The na at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow on earth, above the earth, under the earth. Lord, every knee shall bow, including this COVID-19 will not reach us. We come into the rest of the service, including the Holy Communion. Bless our God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Thank you. Praise the Lord and good morning, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. And that is His Amen and amen. Brother David at the door, let the people come. They can go up so that we don't achieve CS. Please, uh, Dr. Jifa, may, at least the young people, let them go so we won't crowd it out. May the Lord bless you. Pra Once again, praise the Lord and good morning, church. Hallelujah. Are we excited this morning? Are we excited? Are we rejoicing to be in the presence of God? Hallelujah. Can we give one more round of applause to appreciate our awesome, loving God for this beautiful Sunday morning. I just wanted to let you know because of the order of service is a heavy presence of the Lord. Let's not miss. Let's look at your neighbor. Just wave at him and her and say, my neighbor, I missed you. At least I am happy to see you today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let me take this wonderful opportunity to welcome you all to this beautiful Sunday service. May the Lord bless you. What a wonderful God to see that we are on the first Sunday of the last quarter of this year. It is only God's grace. It is only God's grace. May the Lord bless you. As we welcome everyone, it's your first time to attend a Sunday service in House of Prayer. Would you please stand? We would like to acknowledge and appreciate anyone here for the first day. We have a brother here. We have a brother, please remain standing. And then we have a sister at the back. We, please, please. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Until you receive a welcome card, you may stand. May the Lord bless you. If you receive a welcome card, you may be seated. Amen. Please take your seat. Hallelujah. We highly appreciate our visitors. You make a great and wonderful difference in the church. You, we are so blessed and honored to have you this Sunday morning. This house of prayer to fellowship with is, uh, with you. We hope you will enjoy the presence of God. As a house of prayer family, we always say, if you are just visiting this Sunday morning, take our warm and wonderful Christian greetings to your own church. May the Lord bless you. Looking forward to fellowship with you. Maybe you are an Indola resident or you are relocated to Indola. And past a few months and weeks, you have been searching for a church to fellowship. As a part of your search this Sunday morning, you are here. As a house of prayer family, we have a good news. The good news is your search has come to an end. We are Bible-believing Pentecostal church. As you worship with us, we will let you know why we are here so that we can serve the Lord together. As you receive the welcome card, make sure you fill your details. After filling your details, please don't hand it over and your visitors sleep. Please tear it off the preparation part where you have filled your details just hand it over to ushers rest you can carry it will help you to know more about us may the lord bless you amen thank you church we have been praying and fasting this is the seventh day 
of our prayer and fasting the past uh, six evening we have awesome time here the man of god has released the word we enjoy the presence of god thank you some of you are not able to come but we are you have been connected to the zoom and watching online i am sure god is touching all of us we are stepping into this third fourth quarter with a new revelation, new hope, new great expectation. The Lord will bless us. Amen. Just to quickly look at our announcements quickly at the back of the bullet. We want to thank God for the opening of the church to continue the service. Amen. We will think of next Sunday, we will make an announcement concerning the Sunday school ministry. We will think maybe at least a junior children can meet, and, but we will let you know on coming Sunday. So the Sunday school teacher, we will discuss. Amen. But I have shared with Pastor Peter, youth are geared to have a meeting. They will have a meeting the next Sunday onward. They are picking up. May the Lord bless you. Our worship service continues. And let's you know we have our other weekly activities, our miracle nights are on every Wednesday. Tell your neighbor, Miracle Night Service, Wednesday, 18.15. Hallelujah. And uh, I am praying and fasting that one of the greatest miracles takes place in house of prayer on Wednesday is disappearing of the congregation. That will be ending. Hallelujah. During the seven days of prayer and fasting, that miracle will come to an end. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, please pray that we, every Wednesday we have 18, 15 Miracle Night Service. And our intercession every Saturday, uh, 8 to 9, every Sunday, 7.30 to 8.30. No, let's not miss this opportunity. Amen. And praise and worship practice continues. We have a, a marriage band for announcing our marriage band. The holy matrimony of Sangeeta, Rachel Raj, and Abraham. James Finney will be, God willing, be solemnized on 11 in November 2021 in Chennai in India. Uh, the marriage will take place in India. If any of you have a genuine and biblical reason why these two should not uh, get married, if you are able to travel to complain, you can travel to India, no problem. Uh, but if you want to let me know, but let me know before the 11th of November. After anything God reveals, may you hold your peace. Hallelujah. That's all the announcement. And this, I think, if I'm not mistaken, next Sunday it will be in the bulletin. Uh, on 27th of this month, we will have a Reverend Doris Hockett, the great missionary who comes to always visiting us. She will be visiting the ministry on that. Amen. That's all the announcements. Anyone's birthday falls this week, would you please stand? We wanted to pray for you. Anyone's birthday? Our elder staff birthday, elder Pat's birthday, anyone? Amen. Those who are married and your wedding anniversary falls this week, would you please stand? Would you please stand? Yeah, just to let you know, if any of the parents would like to sit with the children to enjoy, if you wanted to move around, there's a Sunday school room which is open. You are free to sit with your children, so you are able to listen. You have to feel the room is open this side. Uh, so you are free to do, move around. Amen. Let's pray for those who are celebrating our birthday, especially our elder. Amen. Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Jesus. This day you blessed us. Today our hearts are full of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Father, for our elder Pat. A woman of God whom you blessed to the kingdom of God, especially to house of prayer family. She's not really just a blessing to her own family, to us too, oh God. As you are adding one more wonderful year into her life. This morning as a family, we pronounce God's blessing. May you bless her with many, many blessed years. And you will fulfill all the promises you are promised for in this season. May God bless our God. In, so in the name of Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we bless your servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together and celebrate. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless. That's all the announcements for today. We'll, uh, we are going to have a little change of program, as usual service. This time we will have the word of God, the uh, 
man of God is going to minister. Sorry, apology to my bishop and the congregation. The designation of our servant of God is not a reverend. That was a typing error. He's a bishop. Uh, with the Pentecostal Assemblies of God, Zambia, Bishop Gift Mukoka. Bishop, we know Gift from Bishop Gift from 2009. We have been ministering to them. He's been here many times and ministered. Past two evening, we were so blessed by the powerful revelation. May the Lord be a blessed man of God. So let's put our hands together. Welcome Bishop Gift Mukoka to come and deliver the word of God. Amen. Welcome, man of God. Welcome. Good morning, church. It's a blessed day today, just like any other day. Hallelujah. I'm sure we are all happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Pastor, thank you for uh, this opportunity. I give God the glory for according me an opportunity to stand before the children of God and minister uh, the word of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Uh, before I minister, I want to call upon my wife to come and just pray. Pray for us, pray for me as well. Before the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Shall we just pray? Our dear loving Father, this morning, we approach your throne of grace today with great gratitude in our hearts that you have accorded us an opportunity to be in your house this morning, which we consider to be a rare privilege, O oh God. We do not want to take it for granted that we made it to come to church today. It is not our strength, but yours, Jehovah God. And we are grateful that we can come in your house and fellowship and enjoy the presence of God. Father God, as my husband ministers this morning, I pray this morning that you may give him the grace to speak your word with clarity of speech, O oh God. Not for the eloquency, but that, Lord, he may communicate your oracles from the throne of grace. Now we pray that, Lord, your presence may go around about him, O oh God, that he may speak not his own word, but that which is coming from the throne of grace, that which somebody needs to hear this morning, that heart that needs to be lifted and be blessed this morning. Father God, so we have come, that we may be blessed of you, that we may hear what you have to tell us today. And such, O oh God Almighty, we pray, that we shall not be robbed of, but that we will receive that which is coming from the throne of grace. We pray all this, Jehovah God, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for that prayer. Uh, this morning, we are in Deuteronomy. Yesterday, we were in Matthew 7 and verse 7, where we talked about exposure, and we looked at the passage in Matthew 7, 7 in detail. This morning, we are not going in detail with Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. And uh, I invite you to turn to that passage.
you can turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor that I'm advancing to the next level. I'm advancing to the next level. Hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. The Lord our God said to us in Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Araba, in the hill country and in the lowland, in the Negev and by the sea coast, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. We are introduced to the children of Israel on their journey to the promised land. After journeying for about three months, they settle in this place. They rested, they enjoyed the peace. The Lord protected, protected them by day and by night. Because of their comfort, they stayed for almost two years. And it had to take God to remind them that they are on a mission to possess the land. You've stayed enough in this comfort place, comfortable place. It's time for you to move on to the next level. Hallelujah. We are talking about the season to reign over every impossibility in Christ Jesus. Whenever we talk about the season to reign over every impossibility. We are talking about the next level. We are talking about the next stage. We are talking about the next place where the Lord wants us to be. Human life is not designed for stagnation. God never designed you to be stagnant. The more you make movements, the more you even stay healthy. Even in the kingdom of God, from the spiritual point of view, when you make advancement in every area of your life, you become more fruitful. We are designed to progress in every area of our life. Even in marriage, we are designed to make progress. There are times where, you know, you grow up and mature. The things that used to divide you as husband and wife, because you've reached maturity, you've gone to another level, they become a stepping stone for you to go to another level. Your next level might be different from my next level. Because our starting points are totally different. Our starting points are totally different. And we are also called differently. The way I preach is different from the way my pastor preaches. The way you do ministry is different from the way your colleague does ministry. But we are all called and designed to advance 
to the next level. Going to the next level is a process. It's a process. And this process takes faith. This process demands for strategy. It demands for strategy. So, I encourage you to be strategic in every area of your life. You cannot depend on yesterday's strategy. And you want to use the same strategy to advance to the next level. You've got to tarry in the presence of the Lord and hear him well. Hallelujah. Let me borrow the words of a servant of God by the name of Selman, Joshua. I'm sure maybe some of you have read uh, his, you know, publications. He talks about the four stages of life. Four stages of life. These are not my words. I give credit to the servant of God who published the four stages of life. The first stage is the learning stage. The first stage is the learning stage. I give an example of a person who is learning how to drive. That vehicle is supposed to have a tag in front and behind with L on it to show everyone that this one is a learner he or she is learning so as you the experienced driver is approaching this person you've got to be careful whatever will happen to you that person still enjoys immunity as long as the learning process is legal, will be protected by law. At this stage, you have an opportunity to learn, and your mistakes are tolerated. Everyone else will understand. Anyway, is a learner. Anyway, we we, we understand. This is the first stage, the learning stage. This level, this is where you also learn to invest in your personal development as a child of God. You learn to invest in your personal development, like spiritual development. You learn how to pray. You learn how to fast. You learn how to study the word, how to read the word. You learn how to do ministry. It is at this level. You know, as a convert, as a new Christian, everyone will understand some of the errors. I know you have a story to tell. You remember when you just got born again. How you used to pray how you used to do things, ministry. Some of us were called hypers. But, you know, people that mentored us understood our level, understood the stage that we approached. This is the level where you also invest in your education. You can go to school. You can advance from diploma to degree, degree, master's, master's, doctorate, and all that until you become maybe a professor or, or so. So it is an opportunity for someone to learn. And you learn from your mistakes. And everyone 
we understand. The second stage is the execution stage. This is where you now put into practice what you have learned. And in this, at this level, you keep growing. You keep the momentum in many areas of your life. When you succeed or success doesn't mean you stop growing. You keep on growing from one success to another. Even in the kingdom of God, we grow from one glory to another. So at this stage, it's the execution stage. You put into practice everything that you learned in the stage, in the error stage, the learning stage. At this stage, at this level, you know who are your true friends. Who is your true friend? And you know who to grow with. Because at this stage, some of your errors will not be tolerated. Some of your errors will not be tolerated. So whenever God is taking someone to a new level, he will first build and develop, strengthen this person from inside out. This is how God, you know, helps us from the inside out. He will strengthen you from the inside. He will build you from the inside. He will let that which is weak, strengthened by his own grace. This is where character is formed. This is where integrity is formed. And all the needs to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God. Hallelujah. This is the second stage. I can take you to Psalm 127 and verse 1. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. At this stage, this level, you grow by God's grace. Unless the Lord builds, the builder builds but in vain. Let's go to stage three. This is the stage of legacy. The stage of legacy. By this time, you would have made maximum kingdom impact. Maximum kingdom impact. You become a mentor. You become a mentor. Because, you know, legacy... It's not what you live on earth. Like buildings, bank accounts, and all that. Legacy is not about that. Legacy is all about what you leave in people. Hallelujah. What you leave in people, not the things you leave for them. So at this stage, you, you would have saved your generation. I mean, your, you become a mentor. You begin to, you know, pour the acquired wisdom, the wisdom that you acquired in the first stage, the wisdom that you acquired, the lessons that you learned in the second stage. These are the things that now you begin to pour out. We've got to reach a level where you don't become selfish. You become somebody who is pouring the wisdom, 
pouring the knowledge, pouring yourself out because time is running out. You no longer have the luxury of time. Even in your urge, you are advancing. So you become a mentor. This is the period where the younger generation begin to benefit from your life. This is the legacy that we are talking about. To some, this is the stage at which they begin to write books. Hallelujah. You begin to write books. You pour your wisdom. You add ink to your wisdom. Even when you are long gone, you will be remembered. Your legacy will still stand. There's one thing that I've learned in life. That where you sit determines what you see. Where you sit determines what you see. Even in this place where you are seated, depending on where you are seated, it will determine what you are able to see. Our colleagues who are stayed up there, what they are seeing and what you are seeing, totally different. So we have our mothers and our fathers in this church, in our communities, and let me talk about in this church. Our mothers and our fathers, they've been through a lot of things. They've learned a lot in life. You don't just look at their age. Behind that age, there is experience. Behind that age, there is wisdom. Behind that age, there is a reservoir of experience. So you have an opportunity as a young man, as a young woman, as a young couple to approach them. That's why they are still alive today. Approach them. Ask, how did you manage? Me, I'm at the first stage. I'm learning. What's the secret? You are 60 years. You are 70 years. You are 80. What happened? How did it come about? They begin to pour out. They begin to pour out. That way, you will move faster, regardless of your age, from that stage to another stage. You don't have to stay for too long in, on that mountain. Time for you to move is now. Because it is a season to reign over every impossibility in Christ Jesus. They are a blessing in the church. A real, a real blessing. We can tap from their wisdom. They don't need the anointing. You can have the anointing without wisdom. Anointing without knowledge. But they have the wisdom and the knowledge to sustain your anointing. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. We talk about the last stage, the fourth stage, the stage of rest. The stage of rest. At this level, you can now boast in the Lord that I have saved my generation. It is now time to rest. You can no longer fast the way the young men are fasting. And God will still increase you. Hallelujah. God will still increase you. You pour your life as a drink offering. That's why God has kept our elderly up to this time. So that available empty vessels can be poured into before they finally rest in the bosom of Abraham. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Many people celebrate advancement in years without impact. 
Oh, I'm now 90 years old. I'm now 70 years old. Look at the impact. Look at the impact. You are still alive because God wants you to impact this generation and the next generation. Impact in the kingdom of God is very, very important. Men and women that have advanced to this level, they are walking Bibles. They are walking Bibles. You have the knowledge. You can't read. Maybe your eyes are failing you. But you have something, substance within you. Unmatched wisdom. Unmatched knowledge. Once again, we thank God for our fathers and our mothers in this church. I can trace their impact from the time we were in Sanfia. I keep referring to Sanfia. Pastor used to bring a team there. A well-balanced team. That's leadership. A well-balanced team of young men, young women, and our elderly on the team. I got exposed to that and I've learned something from the leadership of our pastor. So God bless you so much and may God add more and more wisdom and anointing in Jesus' name. No matter what you have seen and experienced already, a better dimension of you awaits in your next level. You can say, today I'm like this, at this level, and you begin to enjoy my brother, my sister. There is a level that awaits you. Another dimension. Our God is a God of the next level. Don't compare yourself to him who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You have to advance. You have to grow. You have to move from one level to another. This is the season to reign over every impossibility in Christ Jesus. Not a season of idleness. But the season to reign. And you know, whenever you talk about reigning, reigning you are putting yourself at another level like a king. You are talking about authority. You can't reign without authority. You can't. Reigning is not about yes. Reigning is about authority being given to you. So when we talk about the season to reign over every impossibility, we are talking about authority. So you are getting into another level of authority. Hallelujah. So it's not a season of idleness. You know when you pray, one thing I've come to learn, when you pray and God opens doors, when you pray and God doesn't open doors, not that he doesn't love you, but it's because he knows that divine doors, doors that God opens, they don't open alone. There are other doors in another kingdom that also open according to your level. At your level, spiritually, at your level, financially, at your level, economically, at your level, health-wise, there are doors that cannot open until you move to another level. Until you grow from one level, in that level where you are, to another level. I will give an example in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. When God answers your prayers and moves you to your next level, what happens? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. Let me read that passage. This, I'll start from verse 8. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a wide door for effective work has opened to me. 
and there are many adversaries or enemies. The door has been opened. God has answered your prayer. But at the same time, another door for enemies has opened. Another door of attacks has opened. Another door, you know, another level of challenges. So the more you advance this level, demons also advance. They are graduated to say, you, you cannot handle this level. You can now rest. We need to appoint other demons that can match this level. So this is what the writer is saying. The door has been opened to me. God has answered me. God has moved me to another level. But this level has attracted more opposition. This level has attracted more battles. That's why you need to prepare yourself at that level where you are. Thank God for the seven days of prayer and fasting and many other days that you have been praying and fasting, seeking the mind of God. In life, I've come to learn that it's not everyone that you can help just because they are struggling. Ask God, do I need to help here or not? I can take you to the story of a young boy with a butterfly. This butterfly is trying to come out of its cocoon. It breaks it, and it is struggling, and this young boy says, no, 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 I think this is very bad. Look at this butterfly. It's struggling to come out, and the boy, the butterfly, the cocoon, and, you know, expands, you know, enlarges the, the, the way. And the butterfly comes out with ease. Now, that easiness produced deformity because the butterfly needed to struggle through the tiny way so that the liquid from the body can be sprayed to the wings and the legs. So that the moment it comes out through that struggle, it will be able to survive at that other level, at another level. But because somebody felt he needed to help, and he helped at the wrong time, there was deformity. You need to discern people that you need to help. It's not everyone, and it's not all the time. Sometimes we need to grow through the struggles in life. Appreciate, you know, suffering, we are also called not just to enjoy our salvation. We are also called to suffer with Christ. We are also called. It's also calling. It's a call. It's a call. And it's there. It's biblical. Every level where the Lord takes you has its own challenges. That's why you need to immerse yourself in the presence of the Lord and inquire of him about the next move in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The challenges of life, like I said, are a stepping stone to higher levels. Appreciate and give thanks to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. In everything, give thanks. There is no loss when you give thanks to the Lord for what you are going through. He knows what he is doing. Remember the first day I ministered here. Romans 8 verse 28. We know that in all things, God works all things together. Not so. All things, God is able to take this and that situation and that problem and that challenge mix them together for your own good. So you are the God who is working behind the scene. All you need to do is, is give thanks to the Lord. Someone said, you are not a thermometer. Stop reading the weather. You are a thermostat and you can determine your own weather. 
Hallelujah. Because we are used to, you know how I'm feeling, you know this and that, you know this and that. You always want to share what you are going through, complaining. No ways. We need to move from one level to another because every level in your life attracts challenges. That's why we have, like I was saying, our elders in the church. They are approachable. They are there for a purpose. Approach them. They are your fathers. They are our fathers, our mothers. That's why we have servants of God in the church. Approach them. That's why it's important. You know, we are talking about reigning in Christ Jesus over every impossibility. This pulpit here, it's a place of authority. So it depends who stands and unleashes the authority before you. That's why pastor is prayerful. He knows people to invite and when to invite them. Because he knows that it is God who is going to judge him for allowing people with questionable authority to pass it on. Authority is authority. The devil attacks when he is given authority. When he is given space. That's why when we pray, God speaks to us in Jesus' mighty name. Let me just conclude. I know time is not with me. What the next level will bring in your life? Just three things. There are a lot, but let me just give you three things. What the next level will bring in your life as we reign over every impossibility. Number one, the new anointing. The new anointing. Every new level will bring to you the new anointing. Because you have new challenges. You have new enemies. You have new adversaries. So you will not survive with the same anointing of the first learning stage. That's why at the first learning stage, you are only given a provision. So there is also in the spiritual realm where you are given the provisional anointing. Until you graduate to another level, that's when you are given now the license. And when the enemy looks at you, he sees there is no air, you are no longer learning, then you will say, wow, I think this one has no immunity. He's on his own. That's why we need to arm ourselves, put on the full armor of God, that we may be able to stand in the evil day. Everyone has an evil day ahead of them. According to the level that you reach. David was anointed in three different levels. The first level is in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. The second level is in 2 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 4. And the third level is in 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 3. He was anointed in three levels. First before he became king. And when he became king. When you are preparing yourself for the next level, you need the anointing. The anointing for preparation. Because every foundation is very, very important in life. So every level brings with it the anointing from above. New anointing. And I believe in this season... God is outpouring his new anointing in this church. He's outpouring his new anointing because you are no longer at the same level. God is moving you to another level. Levels where you used to crawl to, now you are going to fly to. Because God is giving you another level of anointing. Hallelujah. Places where you used to go to, crawling, you will no longer grow. Maybe you need now the anointing to walk. It is another level. 
The second thing that the, new, the next level brings in your life is new territories. New territories. This can even be geographical or physical. It can also be spiritual. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. Hallelujah. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is what the next level does. It introduces you to new territories. As we are moving to another level, as we are in this season, which is the next level from the level where we were last time, I can guarantee you that some of you, God will open doors and you will be in places, in countries, in you know, positions that you never held before. May God give you a new territory. May God expand your territory like Jabez. May God give you a new territory in Jesus' mighty name. Because you have the fresh anointing from above, which will sustain you even in that territory, even in that area where the Lord is taking you. The last one, new joy. The next level brings with it new joy. Hallelujah. This is where you look back and you look at the things that used to disturb you. They are no longer an issue to you. You just laugh at them. You just laugh at them. I can testify even in our marriage with my wife. In September this year, we clocked 22 years in marriage. The first five years, first three, four, five years, Issues that used to divide us are no longer issues of concern to us. Because we have moved on. It's time to enjoy. It's time to feel the joy of the Lord within ourselves. Hallelujah. I encourage you, if you are a family, you are a couple, and God has given you a new level, a new territory. Find the time because you have to enjoy every bit of it that the Lord is giving you. Take your family out. Try to, you know, you, you can go out with your family. Enjoy time together. You've been through a lot. It's now the season to run over all those issues that used to divide your family. Forgiveness. Reconciliation. Begin to look at that. Find a better place that will add, you know, some spice to your life, to your marriage, to your relationship. In Jesus' name. May the Lord, God, be honored. His name be exalted as I invite pastor to come. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Worship team, you can come and take your post. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. What a word. Just meditate on that word. Hallelujah. Receive the benefits of new level of hallelujah. God taking you new territories, new anointing, new territories, new joy is our portion. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we want to say thank you for the word that has released. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we receive that word with the total confidence. As a house of prayer, we are stepping into new anointing. 
we are stepping into new territories we are stepping into new joy thank you lord in jesus name amen man of god thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much hallelujah at this moment uh, as we prepare for the holy communion ushers we will wait for the tithe and offering thank you church for the sacrificial giving ushers ushers thank you for your sacrificial giving may the lord bless you you have been a so you have been a wonderful church a faithful and a sacrificial giver may the lord continue to open the flood gates of heaven let's pray father thank you for this powerful church a cheerful and sacrificial giver as they prepare to give a god of a prayer you will open the flood gates of heaven and return to them towers and follow god and if any of us have nothing to give today is the last day there will be supernatural provision of blessings of god and every single coin will be used for the expansion of your kingdom in jesus name amen and amen and amen thank you church for your sacrificial and faithful giving hallelujah may the lord may the lord bless you as the shirts wait pastor peter we can prepare today is the holy communion sunday as we break our seven days of prayer and fasting uh, thank you church for standing together with the vision to pray and fast may the lord bless you and uh, thank you bishop for coming and blessing all the servants of god who blessed may the lord bless you thank you and the holy communion just let me as you are pouring uh, putting your offering just to may understand holy that's you know holy holy communion is for every you are come with the children it's a very serious business i want you to understand i want you to understand if you are not born again because as a pastor i have a responsibility if you know your child is not born again tell your son or daughter the time will come you can partake the holy communion children will be excited because this is a very serious business uh once everyone Who, those who are born again and you have a confidence that you have a right to walk with the lord you are welcome to partake the holy communion you are visiting with us at your church if you partake the holy communion you are welcome to join amen and because of the regulations as we know those who are for the sake of those who are coming for the first time after we pray from this side one by one from the you are come you can come and you will show me your hand i will give you bread then you pick a cup of juice and you go and take your seat then after everyone has taken we will partake together ashers if you have collected the offering ashers if you have collected the offering we can keep the bag after the holy communion you partake we can go and count hallelujah shall we close our eyes thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you father thank you thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord this is not a house or prayer table this is the lord's table And apostle Paul is very serious about in 1st Corinthians when he gives the commandment about the holy communion. He wants us everyone must examine ourselves before we partake the holy communion and he said some of us are sick and even dead because we have partaken the holy communion in an unworthy manner. This is not a joke. The bread symbolizes the body of Jesus. Juice symbolizes the blood of Jesus. A covenant meal the Lord has established for the children of the new covenant whom were purchased by the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. So close your eyes and as the Lord, we have been praying and fasting as the Lord 
Thank you for the grace you have given to me. Thank you, Lord. If anything in me, cleanse me, wash me, make me whiter than snow. As the Psalm David cried in Psalm 51, Lord, make me whiter than snow. Cleanse me. As we are praying, the Holy Communion reminds the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. It also reminds the second coming of Jesus is imminent. We must be ready any time as the children of God. Let our hearts and mind be filled with the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the garden of Gethsemane to Golgotha, the pain and the suffering of our Lord Jesus went through. Thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Even his closest disciple failed to stand with him in the last hour. But he went alone, cried and said, Father, possible, take this cup. But it is not my will that you will be done. The word of God says his sweatings were like a blood drops. It shows how heavy was my sin. Tell the Lord, thank you for cleansing me. The way the Roman soldiers treated him, they flogged him. Flesh from his body was shattered for my sin. They put a huge crown of thorn on his head and they strike the huge thorns pierced his skull for of us. They spat on his face, they mocked him, they slapped him, they made him half naked for of us. He carried the heavy cross to the Golgotha for of our sin falling many times. People he hurled insult on him. The huge nails went through his hands and feet. He was pierced. He said, I am thirsty. He gave, he drank a bit of vinegar for us. Finally, he said, it is finished. Because of that perfect and eternal sacrifice he has done this morning, we can come and partake the Holy Communion. Tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this perfect sacrifice. Cleanse me. Wash me. Cleanse my thoughts. Cleanse my imagination. Cleanse my deeds, oh God. Anything. Anything which is not pleasing to you, cleanse me. Make me worthy to partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All those who are going to partake the Holy Communion, kindly stand. So those who, from this side, you will come from one. Once we finish, people from the balcony, you are free to come. Then this side, then we will. After you received, you may go and sit and pray until we serve everything. Then we can, we can partake.
Anyone you haven't received bread or juice, either raise a hand or come to the front. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink from the cup too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want to say thank you. In the land of the living, you have given us a one more privilege to partake. Your body and your blood. It is through your grace. Lord, you allowed us to have this privilege. Give us a grace and anointing and the gift so that we will live a life which will glorify you, which will bear more fruit, which will be a worthy of your calling, O God. Father, bread and juice is remaining on this table. That is an indication to us. You are going to bring people from various tribes and languages and nationality to house of prayer. He was the grace to receive the Moga. Bless O God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you. At this moment, I request the ushers from building committee. If a uh, building committee ushers are not there, any two or three, make it very fast. Three of any two or three, uh, we can. In, uh, uh, if you are a visitor, today is the first time you are visiting the house of prayer and you are thinking why there is an, another offering. This offering completely goes towards the construction of the sanctuary but we don't look at anyone, we don't force as the offering bags are passed, if God has given you anything towards the construction of the sanctuary, you are free to drop. Shall we all stand? We are done the service. And um, if God has given anything, just drop it then close your eyes. Hallelujah. The Lord had given us the uh, grace to pray and fast seven days. And the presence of the Lord was with us. Hallelujah. As the man of God, Bishop has released the word of God. Speak, receive that word and speak into your life a new level of anointing. Hallelujah. New level of anointing. And a new territory which God is taking you. And a new maturity and new joy the Lord is taking. Hallelujah. Receive that word. Hallelujah. And I don't want any of you to go from the sanctuary after the seven days of prayer and fasting the same way you enter. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Speak into your life. Speak into your situation. Whatever impossibility. We are the last quarter of 2021 and the prophetic declaration. The man of God who preached today, he had no idea what I have shared with you a few weeks before the servants of God released. There is a new territory, new anointing, new growth God is bringing in the third quarter, last quarter of 2021. And that is what the servant of God has confirmed today through the word and declare it and receive it. Hallelujah. If you have a sick, if you are sick and anyone you left as a sick at home today, the anointing and the grace of healing may release at your territory when you go things must change in the name of Jesus hallelujah maybe as the man of God was emphasizing on the 
family and the marriage you are married and you are having a thick and thin and constant trouble attack against your marriage today there is a new joy and new maturity new understanding god is releasing upon lord we pray for every marriage as every families in house of prayer they enjoy god's grace maybe you are a single man and woman brother and sister looking for a life partner today i pray according to the word of god the man of god has released may god bring that person that suitable helper that man into your life and so that you can also testify my god has answered my prayer Maybe in your ministry, in your spiritual life, you are being stagnant. As the man of God read from Deuteronomy chapter 1, it's been too long in that mountain. Mountain of stagnation, mountain of struggle, mountain of weeping, mountain of crying, mountain of poverty, mountain of not able to see a crop and breakthrough. Only what you see a struggle today, the new joy, new anointing new territory the season to reign over every impossibility may reach your ministry wherever you are when you reach your life wherever you are in the name of Jesus hallelujah maybe some of us who are here listening you are struggling with a certain sin in the name of Jesus it is not leaving you that anointing that can break the every yoke of the devil that sin must be broken today in the name of Jesus the body and the blood of Jesus Jesus, which you have partaken, may set you free in the name of Jesus. Maybe your education, maybe your career, maybe your job, maybe your business. Hallelujah! What are what is bothering you today? You are in you are in the fourth quarter of 2021. And the Lord says it is a new dimension. It is a new level. Hallelujah! It is a new level. House of prayer, family. Hallelujah! My dad, my mom, my brother, my sister, our children. Not only in house of prayer, those who are tuned to us through the social media around the world you may be under attack you may be disappointed you may be devastated but today you are in a new season hallelujah i want all of us to raise your hand to the heaven and to the lord thank you i am in a new season I receive that new anointing in my life. It is the word of God. Tell the Lord, according to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, I've been too long there. It may be COVID, it may be Corona, it may be pandemic, it may be epidemic, it may be a sickness. What? I've been in that mountain for too long, but today, with the authority you have given to us as an anointed woman of God, an anointed man of God, anointed child of God, we are moving into the next level. Hallelujah. As a house of prayer, your family is moving into the next level. Your jobs are moving into the next level. Your businesses are moving into the next level. Your children are moving into next level our ministry is moving into next level your joy of the salvation is going into the another level just worship even that's anointing worship Oh, 
Jesus. Oh, oh yes, the name of Jesus. Oh, the one you love has come to worship you. The one you love has come to worship you. Join me as we sing Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. As your people go home, after seven days of prayer and fasting, no form of counterattack in the name of Jesus. No accidents, no death, no chaos, no confusion. Their lives, their family, their future, their going, their coming, everything is protected by the blood of Jesus. It is your will on Wednesday evening, 1815, we will come and testify the new anointing and new territories and new joy where people have received. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your servant, Bishop Gift Mukuk, and the family and the ministry. Continue to bless them and use them mightily, O God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for the sacrificial giving towards the construction of the sanctuary from the people. Bless them. Let them not lack anything, O Jesus, O God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you richly. Have a wonderful day.
wonderful week don't forget wednesday we have a miracle night service enjoy the final song as we worship the lord amen There's no one, there's no one like you 